Oi, it's another television affair and I'm Johnny and we're at episode 20, a milestone on the channel, so that means we're going to celebrate it by carrying on as regular. Time for a cake, but not that one. So with that in mind, it's time to look at some even more defunct channels. It's a bit like walking around the TV version of abandoned Debenhams. FX289 launched in January 2004 on Sky Digital and it was owned by Fox. The FX brand originates from that place where, okay, so if you're in Birmingham and you're looking uh, at the North Pole and on your left there's some water and that'll take you to Ireland, but you need to go over Ireland. Um, there's a bit more water over there. If you're Moses, then you can just walk it. If you're not, uh, like most of us, uh, then you might need a boat or something. Anyway, because it's weird, there's a bit of Canada in the way, so you need to get past that and go to a place called America. Basically, there's this flat in America, or apartment as they like to call them, and they used to have a channel in it. It was a bit like a mixture of Big Breakfast and local ITV, but all day long, and it used to be on cable only. It launched in 1994 and it played old shows from the 60s, 70s and 80s like Batman, Wonder Woman and The Green Hornet. It had its own version of the big breakfast called Breakfast Time and the channel was unconventional but it worked. Eventually though, some producers who said, that's not how TV works, steamrolled through and destroyed the whole thing. Anyway, although FX289 was called FX, it only pretty much shared the same name with its channel in America. Well, other than some of the shows that it played. By 2004, the Daddy FX changed into this Mega Fox type channel with its own shows such as The Shield, Nip Tuck and some other shows that its grandparent company, Granddaddy Fox, was associated with. The difference with FX289 was that it also included other Miracle shows such as Buffy, Jag and Monk, who strangely enough would go on to replace Rod, Jane and Freddy, but that's another story. FX289 would drop its numbers a year and a half later for those who don't do well with numbers, but more likely it had something to do with being on cable as well as Sky and the numbers were different. <laughs> In 2013, a big reveal would happen though, and I think we were saying FX all wrong, because if you look at it, it's actually fix. And do you know what they did? They sneaked a little sneaky O in the middle and rebranded it to Fox. Of course, it was a Fox all along. A Fox in FX clothing. They would later continue playing shows such as Arrested Development, Family Guy, Babylon 5, NCIS and Dexter. Fox got bought by this huge mouse in 2019 and that meant all of its assets belonged to a dead guy called Disney who happened to own a really big company called Disney also which is a funny coincidence. Anyway, Disney had invented this thing called Disney Plus, which is quite clever for a dead guy, absolute genius, and he decided that having channels on Sky were just a waste of money in that, because when you're Disney and you've got your own Plus, everyone else can get fucked. So Fox pulled out from all of the digital channels and everything and started Disney Plus. Bye! The doors closed in July 2021. You can still find all Fox's shows on Star on Disney Plus, uh, but you won't find Fox or FX on there. Sumo TV was an organised fucking mess of a channel. It used to be called UTV for reasons outlined in the last video. It's a generic name and I can't find much footage of it. But UTV launched in 2002 and Sumo showed up on UTV in early 2006. And then in November 2006, the channel was renamed to Sumo. The channel claimed to be the world's first user-generated content channel, meaning that it didn't make its own content. People could upload their content, uh, provided it wasn't copyright. 
Hey there, this is Sumo.TV. It's a lovely collection of viral videos, 50s and 60s retro clips, and homemade entertainment that you, the punters at home, have been making all for everyone else. Some of it's sick, some of it's dirty, some of it's sweet, and some of it's cute. If you want to get involved, upload your clips on www.sumo.tv. Let's have some fun together, kids, shall we? Yeah! This was in the early days of YouTube and that didn't have anywhere near the same traction as it does now. It included viral clips and back then, viral meant that they were popular online, but this was before the days of TikTok and even Vine, Facebook and Twitter. And back then, being viral meant that a few hundred people liked and shared your MySpace or Bebo post. Sumo managed to keep it going by content sharing everything between other Sumo TV channels in other countries. Ofcom were pretty pissed off with them because they trusted people uploading the videos to judge whether they were appropriate, washing their hands of all the responsibility. In a way, it's good it's gone now because on that basis, it'd be full up with school fights and happy slapping videos. Are they still a thing? In 2008, they actually started having shows which included some mega old films from America in the 40s, 50s and 60s and it did what the advert channel struggled to do, actually play some old TV adverts, uh, although they were mostly American. Its parent company was called the Cellcast Group, which made most of their money on selling ringtones, which is a great idea if you're running a channel that is pretty much the TV version of the Johnny Cash song, One Piece at a Time. Basically, the song is a story about a guy who works in a car plan on the production line and he steals the car one piece at a time. But because that would take a long time to do and car models change over the years, the car he has is all mismatched and fucked, which funnily enough, mismatched and fucked is the title of Rod Jane and Freddy's last album. And what I'm getting at here is that it mustn't have had a lot of viewers, or at least ones that were not smoking illegal substances. To be honest, their audience was more likely to be spending all their money on pot, mobile games and ringtones anyway, and only two of those were legal markets sustainable at the time. They actually made a lot of their money by doing other things, such as being in charge of the voting system for The X Factor, and had other channels such as Big Deal TV, which I mentioned on TV Affair Episode 8. The game network Psychic TV and Psychic Interactive mentioned in episode 9 along with Text to Date and Babe Station which we brushed over also in episode 9. Usually those channels were funded by premium rate phone lines and had adverts for premium rate services or competitions. Most of the channel's idents were produced by Cyriac who has made loads of freaky animations all on YouTube. The channel moved to the gaming and dating section on Sky in 2008, but Sumo would simulcast programming from sister station Psychic TV. Sumo would struggle on until 2012 when it got replaced by the horror channel. Just to address something that I mentioned in the last video and generic names, over the last few days I actually found some more information about the live TV network. So here's what I found. Life started life as Liberty TV in 2000 and it renamed as Life a year later. Life Media had three channels by 2007 with Life TV, Life Showcase and Life 24 but merged all back into one channel and called it Life One. In 2008 though, it randomly went off air in March and then returned in June. This usually means that they're having financial difficulties and not being able to pay for the EPG number on Sky. The channel survived until September 2008 and then it never came back. They played a range of programs, mostly from other channels, including Call Me a Cabbie, One Man and His Hob, Razor Ruddock Soccer School, which I can't find any video of but sounds terrible, Beverly Hillbillies and Matt LeBlanc's Five Coolest Things. Hi, I'm Matt LeBlanc and this is the Five Coolest Things. Cool. Next up, it's time to get spooky. Sorry, that's terrible. Time to get spooky with the Paranormal Channel.
The Paranormal Channel was started by Yvette Fielding and her husband Carl Beatty, who were both previously part of Living TV's Most Haunted. Fielding was known for being a Blue Peter presenter in the 1990s, but then had became known within the paranormal community when she worked with Derek Acora on Most Haunted. Mary loves Dick. Mary loves Dick. I think the pair were looking to do something more independent, I guess, but similar to what they'd done on Living. They're also joined by Paul Ross because, well, he would take any job, really, even Endurance UK. But the less we say about that, the better. That's a lie to Mr. Loss. Fair play to him, though. Anyway, the idea of the channel was to scare the shit out of the viewer, but also was to debate on whether what they were talking about was complete bulls. Oh, and also play films and documentaries about paranormal stuff. I feel like the Y Files would have been great at home here. It rebranded in June 2009 as the Unexplained Channel, and I feel like that was a huge downgrade. Like someone said, Hey guys, we had to fire Ted, who made the graphics, so this is Dan, and he doesn't know about graphics. And I feel like the old idents were more creative, and I like those better than uh, whatever the heck this is. The channel lasted eight more months, and then it fell off air. The channel had some shows, Screaming Banshees, which was hosted by Effect Fielding, that was a sort of a crossover between Most Haunted and Sooty and Co. Paul Ross's Big Black Book of Horror, which was basically CBB's bedtime story with less grit. And I don't know who the heck David Nunn is, but he had a show called Sexy Spirits. Strangely, I couldn't find much about that one, but maybe it's a little bit like that bit in Ghostbusters that everyone forgets about. Finally for today, another channel that claimed to be unexplained was at channel 200, just behind the paranormal channel in the EPG. Edge TV launched in 2008, and I don't think that this channel would be allowed to exist today because it's batshit bonkers, and not even in a funny way. The channel was full of shows with conspiracy theories, ghosts, aliens, spirituality, TV that was supposed to make you think. Not TV that was supposed to make you think you're out of your fucking minds. Ofcom had this rule about being impartial, so even though many of the subjects on the channel would be seen as right wing, dog whistles and anti-vax flat earth garbage these days, provided that the conversation was impartial or that both sides were being represented in some way, it was okay to talk about. If I were to say some of the names that were associated with the station, you might get what I mean, such as Alex Jones and David Icke. Some of the shows would also be online editions, something that actually was quite advanced for its day in 2008 to 2013, but having the TV platform would be sure to encourage others over to their website and watch content over there, which by the way was not regulated by Ofcom. That means you can spout as much shit as you liked. Some shows included On The Edge, with an online show called Over The Edge, and that was an hour-long extension of the show that aired on TV. It was hosted by a guy called Theo Chalmers, not Superintendent Chalmers. Behind the sofa was a DVD and Blu-ray review show. Esoteria was Nick Margerison from Kerrang Radio, kind of doing a video version of his radio show, but instead of having callers, he'd just have guests in. And Nick Ashron's Lightworkers Guide to the Galaxy was a psychic artist, again, talking to people. I've not been able to find many idents about this channel or a lot of footage. However, I did find bits of shows and a trailer for a rescue mission to help them keep the channel on air. By this point, the channel was so far up its own ass, it had no chance of succeeding, and it didn't. And that's number 20 ticked off. Thank you very much to everybody who supported, especially uh, the team members at Level 2, which include Joseph Adams, Stephen Bride, Hooter Noodles, Mark Jackson, Kieran Dyke, Chris Elliott, Manuel Mobius, Tracker John, Samuel Desmond, and Mank Pete. If you want to be a team member, all you have to do is join on YouTube or sign up on Patreon. If you're a level two, you get a readout on the end of the video. Every so often, I'll get some extra little videos out of stuff I might have cut out or even things that were too long to fit the full version in the video. 
if that's not your thing don't forget you can support by liking sharing and subscribing and maybe even leaving a little comment down below the executive producers are tim goodwin and computer tom i've been johnny robinson and i'll still be johnny robinson after this video is finished thank you bye Oh, 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 oh,